in our series called Redefined, and this is our 10th week. Uh, we've been talking about the Sermon on the Mount, the teachings of Jesus from Matthew 5 to Matthew 7. We said, why did we call it Redefined? Because there's a purpose. Some of the biblical concepts and righteous living was defined wrong. It was defined wrongly by other people and religious people. So when Jesus came here on earth, he had to correct things. So this redefine and Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5 to Matthew 7, was actually Jesus is recalibrating us, making sure our Christian thinking and our righteous living is correct based on his definition and not on the definition of the world. That's why we called it redefined. Last night while I was preparing for the message, I came across in Google some of the cute prayer requests of kids. Wow, I'm sure if you have children, they have innocent. Uh, sometimes it might sound silly, but any request it's by Joyce, she said, Thank you, dear God, thank you for the baby brother, but what I prayed for was a puppy. <laughs> so, in short, she wanted the puppy more rather than a younger brother. Sam said, I want to be just like my daddy when I get big, but not with so much hair all over. <laughs> Dear God, if you let the dinosaur not extinct, we would not have a country, so you did the right thing. <laughs> Nan said, I, Dear God, I bet it is very hard for you to love all of everybody in the whole world. There are only four people in our family, and I can never do it. <laughs> it's amazing, the honesty of kids, right? Aman, aman. <laughs> I'm sure he, she, this kid has a point. You know, tonight we'll talk about prayer, and my question to all of us is this. Is there such a thing as a wrong prayer? It's a good question. Um, is there such a thing as a wrong prayer? And if there is, what constitutes a wrong prayer? Now, I'm sure the kids' prayers a while ago, it's not wrong totally. Uh, uh, Christ and God is pleased with kids. In fact, there's a verse, let the little children come to me, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So God is fascinated with kids. I'm sure I'm not talking about that. But how about us as adults and people who have now uh, at least... We are now in the age of accountability. We know what's right and what's wrong. Is there such a thing as a wrong prayer? Unfortunately, when you look at the teachings of Jesus, yes, there is. There is such a thing as a wrong prayer. And so, pastor, the question is, how will I know if I'm praying correctly or if I'm praying wrong? How will I know? And that's what we're going to talk about tonight in Matthew 6 because Jesus talks about a, a basic, at least, concept about prayer but also, he, if we expound it, it has a lot of meaning when he's teaching us how to pray. In Matthew 6, 5, this is what constitutes a wrong prayer. And Pastor Job shared this last week. He said, and when you pray, you must not be like the one or like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you that they have received their reward. And so, this is one basic or criteria of a wrong prayer and Jesus was actually talking about the hypocrite sakit naman no? Jesus saying that strong word okay hypocrite someone who's a show off and so what constitutes a wrong prayer when you look at the verse is actually wrong motive in those times maybe the Pharisees or the Sadducees or the people that, con that Jesus considered as hypocrites they would pray in public and there's nothing wrong in praying in public because we just prayed a while ago and it is a public place. I mean, at least there are a lot more people. But what he's actually saying is, people in, in Jesus' time prayed in public, but the motive was to show off, to show to others that they're religious, to show to others that they're more righteous. And so we can have a wrong prayer. We can pray wrong, especially if we have the wrong motives. And you know, we live in a country in the Philippines, where it's a religious country, and it has its pros and cons. I think being in a religious country, one of the pros is it helps, it's easier to reach out to someone from the Philippines because at least my religious background. They know God, they know Christ. So that's a pro, one of the pros. But a con is actually we can have the wrong motive too. 
that because we're a religious country, sometimes we go through all the rituals like praying, going to church, and sometimes we don't know, sometimes we're unconscious, we already have our wrong motives. It's either to show off to someone that, hey, I'm more righteous than you, we compare and compete with someone else's spirituality, or we judge others, right? And so, think about that while I'm talking now. What makes us, do I pray wrong? It's a good question. Do I pray wrong? Do I have, Lord, do I, in the past years, or maybe today, or last week, or recently, have I prayed wrong? And you'll know if you have a wrong prayer, if there's a wrong motive. Especially if the motive is self-seeking. It's about pleasing yourself, period. And then, pleasing others, probably, also. It can be a wrong motive. Another one, I, I know Pastor Job shared this last week, and I'm just going to delve into that, because this is what constitutes a wrong prayer. Verse 7, it says, And when you pray, so he talked about the hypocrites, the verse 5, but in verse 7, now he's talking about another group of people, non-Jews. When you say Gentiles, these are non-Jews. These are pagans. They also have a method of praying. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think they will be heard for their many words. Now, when you talk about Gentiles, generally you're talking about pagans. So they already have a set of religion, but they're worshiping other gods. So yung hypocrites, probably, Jesus was talking about focused more specifically on the Jews that were actually pleasing people, maybe the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now he's talking about another group of people, the non-Jews, who were worshiping other gods. But he said, do not be like them where they think more words is equals to more efficiency. Siguro sa Gentiles, we weren't there back then, but if you study it further, the word sometimes is called babo. Uh, not speaking in tongues, but babble. Uh, maybe speaking of speak flowery words, poetic words. It should be perfect. The grammar, when you pray to God, it should be perfect. There should be no grammar, wrong grammar. There should be no dead air. Well, that's hard. How many of you here prayed to God and you stuttered? <laughs> Sometimes one pastor, I remember, they, he was praying after the preaching and he did an altar call. And how many of you here want to receive Jesus in your life? And some people responded. And so people came forward. And sabi ng pastor, repeat these words after me. Lord, and of course the people followed. Lord, we forgive you. We forgive you. Sabi naman. Okay, wrong grammar, right? Of course, God honors that prayer. But when you talk about, yung sinasabi ni Jesus, more words, more flowery words, babbling, sometimes we think, and sometimes people think, God listens to that more. Okay? So, minsan yung when you pray for the food. How many of you here, when you pray for the food, it's very short? <laughs> when I pray for the food, sometimes it's short. Lord, thank you. Wala pa. Eh. Wala pang amen, kinuha. Lord, thank you. Okay? But there are some who pray long, right? I mean, like, sumisebo na yung milaga, pare. Sebong sebo na. <laughs> Matigas na yung crispy pata. Lumutong na. Because it's too long. So sometimes we have a mentality where more words, more flowery words, more poetic prayer is equals to more efficiency. Or maybe when you babble, right? Sabi kasi ni Jesus dito, the Gentiles, sometimes when they pray, they speak words too fast. It's like, porky pig. Amen. Amen lang naintindihan mo. So how can we pray wrong according to Jesus? It's actually wrong motive. If it's pleasing, self-pleasing, pleasing everyone, show off, religious show off, or maybe, uh, or maybe other wrong motives, and also wrong manner. It's a method. Because sometimes we think uh, the longer the prayer, the more effective. Well, I'm not saying long prayers are bad. I'm not saying that. I know some intercessors here in our church who pray long. When we had a fasting uh, a few months ago, it's long. I mean, they were praying like 24 hours downstairs. And so there's nothing wrong with the length of prayer. But if we think the manner of our prayer is more effective, like if the longer the prayer, the more effective it is, then, or the more words, the more effective, then we're wrong. Sometimes in the prayer requests, you don't have to share it, everything, okay? Because sometimes maybe you write in the prayer request, you, you, it's like MMK already. <laughs> the handwriting is so small, it's like 
from the very beginning, the moment you were born up to now. Let's not just say it because God knows what you need. And let me tell you this. It's not the words that bring effectivity to your prayers. It's the God that we're praying to. You know the reason why God answers prayers? It's not because of how many flowery or poetic words you use or how long your prayer was, but how many really because it's the power of God. Amen? He's faithful. So my encouragement for us, if you're new here, if you can consider yourself as a rookie Christian, I'm telling you, pray to Jesus and it doesn't matter if it's a wrong grammar. It doesn't matter if it's you stutter or it's dead air. It doesn't matter if it's Taglish or other languages. It doesn't matter. What matters is the right motive. Not only that, the right way. We know when I pray whatever I say, the Lord hears. It's because it's not because of how eloquent my words are, but it's because how powerful my God is. And so that's what constitutes a wrong prayer. So the question now is, how do we pray right? It's a good question. So what constitutes a right prayer then, Pastor? I don't want to leave this place. Just understanding what constitutes a wrong prayer. Okay, now I understand. It's motive. It's the manner. Wrong, wrong prayers can also be wrong if you pray to the wrong God. Or you pray to someone else aside from God. Aside from Jesus. You have other demigods. So how do we pray right? Now that for the next few minutes, I'm going to focus here now. How do we pray right? If I we just discuss what constitutes a wrong prayer, then what constitutes a right prayer then? Let's continue on with the verse in Matthew 6, 9. And we're familiar with this, a lot of us. Prayer, pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Now that's a good opening line to a prayer. Now, we know this is the prayer, our Lord's prayer, and some of us memorized it. Memorized nyo pa ba? How many of you are memorized na yan? Our Father, who art in heaven, panatang makabaya, na combine, no? Our Father, so we know that. But the Lord does not just give us a, an exact memorized prayer. The Lord was actually giving us a pattern and some core essentials of what constitutes a right prayer. Because sometimes we think the Lord wanted us to pray this exactly every day of our lives. Maybe, but there's more to that. There's a purpose why He shares this prayer because if we can slice this, every statement, you will find out and realize what constitutes and what are the core essentials of a correct prayer. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So the opening line, imagine in mono, when you're praying to God, the opening line is the second word, Father. Wow. That's kind of shocking. You know why? Akala ko kasi, when I pray to God, the opening line is, give me. Pehingi noon. Pehingi noon. But the opening line is actually a term of endearment. It's an intimate term. It's a relational term. It's a father. Now, what comes to your mind when you, have, when you hear the word father? Actually, father, uh, pastor, what comes to my kids? A person who has kids. A guy who has kids. Okay, that's right. But when you talk about father, we consider God, the God that we worship, as a father. When you look at the Old Testament, uh, father, he's our great father because the creation, all of us, came from him. Not from the apes. Look at the person beside you. Make sure that person, encourage that person with a smile. That did not come from a bacteria to a lizard to an ape to, a, to an amphibian or whatever. <laughs> No, all of us came from one, uh, the word is progenitor. God is our creator. That's why he's considered as the ultimate father. We all came from him. That's one of the descriptions and definitions of a father. But not only that, when you talk about, when you call God as a father, that's something else. You know, the Gentiles, the pagans, because the pagans back then, they would worship different Greek gods. Zeus. All these gods, mythological gods, they would worship. And they would consider their gods as, they would consider themselves pertaining to their gods as servants. Master Zeus, God, I'm a slave. 
I am nothing. But in Christianity, it's different because when you pray to the God who listens to you, you can call Him Abba Father. I'm not talking about the band. When I say Abba, it's actually Daddy. Daddy God. Wow, how many of you are glad that our God, we can have actually our relationship with Him? So the basis of our prayer is not to a master to a slave relationship. The reason why we can pray to God is because He considers us as His children, sons and daughters. And uh, the God that we pray to is our Father. Ang galing, yung opening line. Imagine mo, the opening line is not, give me that. Okay? And like uh, when you talk to a genie, Diba? Your wish is my command. My first wish, Lord. That's not the first line. The first line is not, provide for my miracle bill. The first line is not, uh, Lord, uh, take care of my business. Or, or give me a car. That's not the first line. The first and foremost line that Jesus is reminding us is, listen, He's your Father. I know some of us have a traumatic relationship with our dads and so sometimes when we think of a positive side of a father it's hard to comprehend it's hard to comprehend but a real and a normal father is someone who will always be there for his children someone who will always take care of his children and Kian was trans- was exhorting us a while ago about how faithful God is you know why he is faithful because he's a father he's a father to us So what constitutes a right prayer according to that first line, our Father in heaven? What constitutes a right prayer is this. It always reminds us that the reason why we pray to Him more often is because I have a relationship with Him. Ang encouragement ko po sa atin lahat, my encouragement for us, church, is this. As we pray to God each and every day, and I hope you do pray, not just on a Sunday, but is that you will shift from, because maybe a lot of us now, we pray to God because of a transactional type of relationship. When I say a transactional type of relationship, you have needs. That happens to me, right? I pray to God because I have needs. You have needs. And so, and there's nothing wrong with that, I guess. When we pray to God and we have needs, I think there's nothing wrong with that. Because, when, hello, when you look at the Old Testament and the New Testament, people prayed because they have needs. So there's nothing wrong. But my en- encouragement for us, when Jesus was teaching us about this, is that we can transition from not just a transactional prayer, but to a relational prayer. The basis of our prayer life is not just because we're driven by our needs, but we're driven because we have a relationship with Him. Diba? When you're... Some of you are married, some of you are dating, some of you are engaged, some of you have best friends, some of you have, of course, I know all of us have relationships, right? Different kinds of relationships. What's the most important thing or one important thing in a relationship? I can hear it. Communication. And so the motive now why we pray is not just we have transactions or needs but because I have a relationship with God. If the God's Word is a primary way where He communicates to us, and of course He speaks to us through other means too, what's our primary way of communicating to Him? It's prayer. And so we can transition from a transactional prayer to a relational prayer. When I was younger, I started off with memorized prayer. In school, it was taught to us, our Father who are in heaven, and that's Lord's Prayer. And so I, I was trained to pray to God and by declaring memorized prayer. But as I transitioned, I became more of a disciple when I was a student, and I got to know God more in a relational way. My, I noticed the last 19 years, my prayer life has evolved, sorry for the word, changed, adjusted, and there are times I notice now when I pray to God, it's sometimes there are needs, but there are times I'm just con- confessing and pouring out my concerns. There are just times when I drive, I just start thanking God. There are times when I'm, when I'm uh, angry at Kian. No, not Kian, but someone else. I just share, Lord, why is he like that? 
You know, you ever read Psalms? Have you noticed some of the Psalms there? Some of the Psalms. <laughs> We're actually not just put to praise the Lord. Have you noticed? It's not praise the Lord, what a perfect day. No, it wasn't like that. When you look at Psalms, the psalmists were just, oh man, David is more direct to the point, Lord, kill my enemies. Ayun, kunin mo na pala siya, it's biblical, I guess. <laughs> you notice that? <laughs> David prayed that. It was really just pouring their heart out to God, whatever they were going through. When you look at that, it gives you a great insight that prayer and communicating to God is not just full for your needs. Hindi lang puro sa pangangailangan natin. It's not just for our needs. It's not just for our desires. It's a relationship. I remember a few years ago when I wasn't married yet, because just to give you a background on myself, I was single, of course, before I got married. <laughs> <laughs> but I was, when I was single, I was no longer, I got used to living independently. So I, uh, some of you, and there's nothing wrong with that, some of you are still staying with your parents, that's good. At least you can save more. But for me, my mom migrated to the States and she remarried and we're in good terms. It's just that she, she married an American citizen. So she stayed there for quite some time. I lived alone together with some of the bachelors from church who are now married also. So, but we were there. It was more of like a uh, bachelor's pad. So I got used to living independently. So I, I don't really talk to my mom uh, more often, you remember Yahoo Messenger? So that's how we talked before. There was no Viber back then. There was no, it's all Yahoo Messenger. And, uh, and so we will talk from time to time. She came here one time. And so she had something for me, maybe a gift. And so it's because we weren't talking, but we have a relationship. And so I called her using, uh, when she migrated, oh, she came here and she started, uh, they lived here already, they live here already. But there was a favor that she actually, she gave me something. I wanted to get something from her, so I called her up. Now, it's not my intention, don't worry. I'm not, it's not like I'm not a user-friendly person. But there came a point where I was talking to her and I, I was just very straight to the point. I said, Ma, oh, where's, have you deposited it already? That was my question. Ma, yes. And my mom is like that. I mean, senior na rin eh. So, yes. Okay, thank you. And I was about to hang up. But before I, I was about to hang up, you know what she said? Ganun na ganun, ganun, ganun na lang ba yon? <laughs> what do you mean? You just called for that? You didn't even say hi? You didn't even say how are you, mom? You didn't even say, I love you, mom. I mean, parents, you know, very emotional. <laughs> very sensitive sometimes. But she has a point, right? It sounded like I called her up just to have a transaction. <laughs> so because I'm going to get something from her. But it sounded like I wasn't even concerned. How are you? I know it, she was joking, but I knew it was half meant. When your parents joke sometimes, remember, there's who got there. It's half meant. It's half meant. And so I said, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, okay, oh, let's have coffee. Okay, let's go out sometime. I had to make up for my mistake. I think about that story where, wow, I've, maybe I've gotten so familiar with it and maybe because of the long distance relationship, I didn't have any bitterness, but it seemed like I was just so focused on something that she had for me. And I didn't really take time to communicate and how are you and everything. I think about that. And I think about our, how we relate to God sometimes. And we come here in church and say, Lord, pray for this. Pray for this breakthrough. I pray for this miracle. But nanggap natin, we receive it. Thank you, Lord. Bye-bye. But what Jesus is actually saying, our Father who art in heaven, you have a relationship with God. You can communicate to him, not just your needs. You can, you can communicate to him how much, how, how are you now, what your feelings are, what are you going through. When my wife and I are having dinner sometimes, you ever saw a picture in Facebook, and I'm sure some of us are guilty with that, you know, on the dining table, all of us are looking at the cell phone. 
in a restaurant. Have you ever seen a family like that or a group of friends? They're together, but they're looking at the cell phone. Instagram, Facebook, MySpace. Me, MySpace, Baba. Friendster. They're not talking. They're just looking at their cell phones. And sometimes, unfortunately, when my wife and I are having dinner, I got that habit. So while we're talking, uh, while not we're talking, we're having dinner, I'm just looking at the cell phone. And my wife will look at me, and then will look at me in the eye and say, Pat, if she doesn't call me honey or love, and she calls me Pat or Patrick, there's something wrong. So <laughs> she tells me now, please, can you drop that demonic gadget? <laughs> no, she didn't say that. Can you stop Facebooking first? And let's talk. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Why? Why do we do that at times? Because someone said, the more high-tech, the more high-touch is needed. How many of you ever call the customer service? It's all automated. But your problem is too complicated. An automated voice cannot solve it. So after like three, five minutes or five hours of waiting, your ears are red already. What do you do? I want a customer service person. Why? Because the more high-tech, the more high-touch. We're all relational beings. Amen? There's No man is an island. Look at the person beside you. That person is relational. We want someone to talk to. Okay, some people are not looking at the person. I don't want any more. I'm tired of your face. <laughs> it's the same thing with God. So when we pray to Him, it's in the context of a relationship. I hope we can transition from, transition from transactions, just barely our needs, but we can transition that gradually as you grow in your relationship with God. We can transition not just from transactional prayer, but to a relational prayer. Just talk to God when you're driving, when you're in your Uber. Oh, Uber's back. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Grab, or when you're in the MRT and... It doesn't have to be scandalous, right? Lord, I pray! When you're in the public place, Lord, I pray. Not flowery word, but at least you're there always constant. Kaya nga ang prayer is 24-7. It's a lifestyle. Amazing. It's in the first line, it's not give me this, give me that, I want this now. Our Father. Reminds us of a relationship. Romans 8.15 it says, For you did not receive the gift of slavery to fall, to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, a sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Daddy. Daddy God. That's why some people say Daddy God, but Abba is more of like that, the word Daddy. It's a term of endearment. It speaks of, Father speaks of not just authority in your life, but Intimacy. Matthew 6, 9, and it says, the second line, hallowed be your name. What does that mean? When you talk about hallowed, when you want the juice, you hallowed. Pagbigyan niyo na ako, okay naman, no? Pwede na, please na, huwag na huwag mock out, kahit corny, but, you know, when you talk about hallowed, what you're actually saying is, Lord, your name is Holy. Ang sinasabi, when you say, hallowed be your name, when you pray to God, you're saying, in short, there's no one like you. My career, my money, material things, and things of this world are nothing compared to you. You are holy. Kasi pag holy is set apart. Lord, you're unique. You're cut above the rest. So when I say, hallowed be your name, it's more of like an adoration to Him. You are actually saying, Lord, I'm praying to you because you're different. There's no one like you. That's what it means when you say holy or hallowed be your name. So the second essential part of what constitutes a right prayer is this. There's an acknowledgement of, or maybe reverence. We revere Him. Yes, I know Father, sometimes if it's a relational term, we can be so familiar. But there's a balance to that. We can call him as daddy or father. The balance to this is hallowed be your name. There's still reverence. Have you ever seen Bart Simpson? Or yung cartoons, The Simpsons? There's no reverence there. You saw Bart? 
he considers, Bart considers his dad, of course, as father in the home. But how do we call? How does he call his dad? Homer. So there's no reverence. There's a familial relationship, relationship there, but there's no reverence. The balance to this prayer is that I have a relationship with God. He's my dad. He's my father. I can come to him anytime. But the balance to that is actually, we can have a familiar spirit there, but the balance is there's still reverence. There's no one like you. That's what it means. And so when we pray to God, it's a relationship. I pray to Him not just because of my needs, but because I have a relationship with Him. But also I revere Him. There's reverence. It's good to revere Him because you get reminded of who you are and who He is. Prayer reminds us of how vulnerable, how weak, how frail, and how delicate and how little we are, especially what we're going through, and how big and how great God is. That's why there still should be an attitude of reverence. Hallowed be your name. There's no one like you. That's why I trust you. That's why there's praise. Someone said this, uh, acts when you pray. Okay? Uh, A is adoration. C is what? Confession. Kaya po sa Lord's Prayer is uh, forgive us our sins. There's part of we ask for forgiveness for the things we did and we pray to Jesus. And uh, T is actually thanksgiving. And then S is for uh, supplication, right? The A is actually adoration. This is adoration, reverence. Lord, there's no one like you. There's praise. So before you even, you know what's wrong? What will happen if there's no reverence? Well, if there's no reverence part in our, in, in our prayer, we get so overwhelmed with our needs, we magnify our needs rather than God. That's problematic. Because I'm sure our needs, when you list it down, it's very overwhelming. But when we have reverence in your prayer, you're actually saying, Lord, I have my needs. I have a problem, but you're bigger. That's how powerful prayer is. You're bigger. I'm not in a posture of bragging. I'm in a posture of humility, of admitting I'm weak and I'm, I'm frail, but you're bigger. That's what we do when we pray. That's what we do when we worship God. A while ago, when we were singing songs, this is what we're doing. We're, there's reverence. We're, we're magnifying Him. Yeah, it's good that when we pray, yes, you can share your needs and ask God for the breakthrough, but it's good in your prayer. It's an attitude of, Lord, but I'm making a decision. You're bigger. I choose to believe that you are bigger and mightier than my problems. I choose to believe, and even though I'm hurting now, I choose to believe you're greater and above and beyond my comprehension. The third R, we're going to look at it in verse 10. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Relationship, that's what constitutes a right prayer, should be a motive of, I have a relationship and he's my father. But the second one, it's actually reverence. There's still adoration, awe. The third one is what I call realignment. What will balance us from having a wrong motive is we're willing to be realigned. Our will is aligned to His will. So when, when you pray the attitude is, Lord, this is my desire. I have faith goals for 2018. By the way, Merry Christmas na, September na. Okay, I have these wish lists in, my, in this coming December. But you know, Lord, at the end of the day, let your will be done. Do we have that attitude of trusting God that His will is better than ours? Because if it's just your desire, I'll have it my way, there's, there's no point in praying. Probably He can. But at the end of the day, it's a test of reverence, but also realignment. My desires should be aligned to your desires. Psalm 33, verse 11, The counsel of the Lord stands firm forever, the plans of His heart to all generations. So the, a good prayer and a good attitude is, Lord, I have my desires, but I want your plans 
to take place in my life because that's better. Because Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God. So how does this author, Paul, describe the will of God? Good, acceptable, and perfect. Other versions will say, good, pleasing, and perfect. Let me tell you, the will of God for you is good, pleasing, and perfect. How many of you are glad that God knows better? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. He knows better. <laughs> Mahirap pag genie si Lord. It would be hard if genie si Lord. He'll just follow all your desires. Because some of our desires, unfortunately, are destructive. Sometimes we think it's good, but it will, be, it will destroy us. But I thank God His will is good, pleasing, and perfect. Good, acceptable, and perfect. To be honest with you, I just had this dose of, I can relate this circumstance that I just faced two weeks ago. A few weeks ago is very, it's still fresh. That I realized that I have my desires and there are still times when I wrestle with the will of God. Because sometimes the will of God is different from my will. When Lucy was hospitalized three weeks ago because of a bacterial infection in his, her lump, there was a lump in her neck and it actually got inflamed. And we got confined because it was, that bacteria was too strong. It cannot be treated orally. And so the doctor was giving us a scenario. If the, the lump doesn't subside after a few days, and even though we tried IV uh, antibiotics, the worst case is surgery. And so the fact that I heard surgery, and when I looked at the age of my daughter, 11 months, I said, no way. No way. I can't bear seeing her go through that procedure as young as she is. And God knows. When we were in the hospital, we were there in the hospital for two weeks. So an IV was injected in her arm and, and it's antibiotics. And, you know, I'm telling you, all the things that I learned here in this school of empowerment, of spiritual warfare prayer, of making a decree, I did every day. Morning, lunch, when I'm driving at night, I, I will pray to God silently. There are times I will carry my daughter and I will point to that lump. And I said, oh, major director, the point in Jesus' name, you demonic bacteria. Not, not, not my baby, but the lump. <laughs> I was very strong already. My wife was looking at me like that. You never pray like that in church service. Yeah, but if it happens to my daughter, it's different. It's a different case. And so I'm, I was making a decree already. I would declare the scriptures and tell, that, Lord, can you send that MRSA bacteria to hell now and it will not infect any babies at all. I was making that prayer, praying that decree, and all this, every day, you know what I'll do? And I wake up early in the morning, because my wife stayed, and the, the nanny was there in the hospital, I had to go home back and forth in the hospital, in the morning I'll check again, where's the lump, where's the lump? It's still there! I'll pray again, I will text all my church friends here, let's storm the heavens, I guess that's not my term, storm, not the song knock, knock, knocking on the heavens door, no, but, that storming the gates of heaven, believing that there will be a supernatural healing and she didn't have to go through that surgery. That was my will. But then a week after, we find out she needed surgery. And so we went through the procedure. I'm emotionally and spiritually discouraged. And I'll be honest with you, I hope some of the pastors are not watching, but... And I'll be honest with you, since you're my family, so. Whoa, so brutal. So I go, actually, to be honest, and I told my wife, and I'll tell you now, I, me tampo okay, Lord. I really had a question. I, I actually questioned God, Joey. I just asked God, Lord, what's the difference between, a, and I started comparing, and I said, what's the difference between a parent a family who doesn't even pray to you, Lord, but their children are healthy, and here I am, I've been praying to you every day, and you don't even listen. And that was a hard moment for me. I was expecting God for supernatural healing, 
didn't subside, then the worst case scenario happened where she needed to go through surgery. And lo and behold, she went through surgery, you even prayed for her, right? And so there was, uh, it was, I, I kind of relate to Jacob and, and God, the angel wrestling, and it was a realignment moment for me. It's a tough, tough situation to go through. But then now, when you look at her, she's well. <laughs> the lump has gone and she's a, you just have follow a checkup and the Lord healed her anyway. But the means to get to that healing was different from my expectation. I share that to you because even I go through that struggle. God's will is different from my will. Either way, I would just have to submit to him and say, Lord, let your will be done. And I think that's what constitutes a healthy prayer life. We can present all our desires to God. But at the end of the day, Lord, let your will be done. Kung mahal na mahal ko yung anak ko, eh, ikaw gumawa niya ni. Hindi, may contribution din ako, but ginawa mo yan eh. Ginawa mo eh. I'm sure if I love her so much, you love her from the different solar systems and infinitely you love her more and you know your purpose. So, you know, even to be honest with you, even right now when I look at her, minsan napapailing pa rin ako eh. When I, I still, Lord, why, why do you allow that to happen? There's still quite, I'm not mad, but I, sometimes I just ask God, why? When I look at the wound, but then again, I just have to trust God. Lord, your will for me is good, pleasing, and perfect. You know, the interesting about this is even Jesus had that struggle when he was a human being. Remember that moment? When you look at the verse in the gospel, he didn't want to die. You remember that? That night when he was praying to God, he didn't want to die. Given the choice, I don't want to be, I'm God, you know, and I'll be sacrificed on the cross. I didn't want that. But then again, he, what he said here is he fell on his face and prayed and saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. But then he, and then he said, Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Transactional prayer to a relational prayer. Where also, as we upgrade, we get to a point, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Jesus did not just give us a pattern how to pray, but Jesus gives us an example of what constitutes a right prayer because he lived it out. I think that's more than enough for us. Amen. Can we all stand? I think God is still faithful. Can I ask the music team to come and I just want us to have a time of worship. You know, from time to time, there's, I know maybe some of us right now are struggling. You have your own desires. But then, the Lord has a different plan. I want, I like that song, Great Is Your Faithfulness, because, you know, when Lucy was sick, and she was about to undergo that surgery and someone texted me you were praying for her I actually cried because it was a not ideal situation for a baby to go some of you parents can relate and I just had to believe God Lord you're faithful I know I cannot see your plans it may not be an ideal plan but Lord you're faithful and so my wife and I prayed that night we were texting and she just said, Lord, at the end of the day, we choose to believe. We choose to believe that you're still good. Even though my expectations were different from your plans, and you choose to, I choose to believe. And I want us to believe that because that's what relational prayer is all about. I choose to believe that you're faithful. Can we lift our hands to God? Lord, we choose to believe. You're faithful. Even though it doesn't make sense. 
even though sometimes you haven't answered our prayers yet I choose to believe you'll never leave us nor forsake us your will for us is good pleasing and perfect and that's why we can have that audacity whenever we pray we can present our requests to you but we can end our prayer saying your lecture will be done because you are faithful can you just pray before we get dismissed Lord pray for each one of us tonight Lord strengthen our prayer life your faithfulness will inspire us and motivate us to pray to you all the more pray Lord for those people who are just like what Kian said doubting and worrying and questioning you sometimes just like me pray that your faithfulness will overwhelm us that Lord it, we will move from transactional prayer to a relational prayer so this coming week may you bless it may you be with us bless all the things we'll be doing Lord may you guide our work of our hands and let your favor and your presence be with us always thank you you are a God who listens you are a God who hears you are a God who loves us so much and so may we live out this coming week fruitful and Lord full of joy and happiness because we have you in our lives and we praise you today we glorify you in Jesus name we pray Amen